Hey guys, it's Matt. Uh, I just wanted to let everybody know that my big presentation or podcast or dissertation on all the bizarre anomalies and how things don't add up with the whole presentation through the media of C, the crisis that we're in now, what I will never be able to load to YouTube, but it's finished. And anybody that gave their information at nohobocode.com, nohobocode.com, will get a link to the podcast. It's just, you'll get a, a link. Just simply click on it, no sign up or anything like that. I'm still working on, you know, what Rob and I are working on because there is no future on this platform because of the censorship. But this is just a thank you to anybody that gave their information. Um, we'll talk about, you know, what we're still building and working on a little bit later. And then I hope when you get it, you send it to as many family and friends as possible. I have 15 areas, at least 15 areas, where what they're presenting us just doesn't add up. And one part of that I'm actually going to present in this video. This video is a dot 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 to a lot of different reality breakdowns away from the C presentation that I finished up this morning. But let me just present um, that part first, which had to do with the salaries of the NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball, and um, the NFL, you know, the four major sports, if I, if, I, if I came out correctly. It is not possible, in my opinion, I haven't seen the books of, this, of the LA Lakers or the Philadelphia 76ers, I haven't seen the books of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but I don't think it's possible that all of these sports have been able to pay full salaries to all their athletes without fans. With, it's basically saying they didn't need the money from fans. Nobody had to take pay cuts. The uh, Clippers in basketball just didn't pop up and say, we can't pay people. Everybody's got to get slashed 15% or we can't stay in business. None of this has happened, which in my understanding. And guys, when you realize how high these salaries have gotten, you you'll see how there's just no possible way this could support itself without um, without fans. I don't think it could be supported with full stadiums and arenas with fans. I think that that's going on, but that's maybe we won't get into that that crazy realm. Let's just look at the obvious. Um, so let me just go to the list here. Um, you won't believe this. The top 50 NBA players, of which half of them are like bums. I mean, just you put them against the greats of the past, they're basically bums. The top 50 all make over $20 million. Not over the five or eight year co contract life, $20 million or more a year. A year. Okay? Let me go to the top 10. Steph Curry, $43 million a year. Russell Westbrook, $41 million a year. Chris Paul, 41. James Harden, 41. James Harden plays no defense, $41 million a year. John Wall, 41. Kevin Durant, 40. LeBron James, 39. Oh, he's a pauper. Drops down to $39 million a year. Blake Griffin, 36. Paul George, 35. Clay Thompson, 35. Two more down. Jimmy Butler, a role player for a few years on the Sixers that now plays for the Heat. Just a role player, a very average player who can have a few great games here and there, but basically putting him against the greats, the NBA greats, basically a bum. $34 million a year. Now, if you're shocked, you should be. Even I didn't realize the salaries are this ridiculous. So you're looking at players, you know, getting 200 to 210, 20 million dollar salaries over a four or five year period. Or I mean, it's just, first of all, how did this even happen in the last 15 years? I mean, common sense would say that viewership has to be up through the roof and no, it's not. See, the old formula of advertisers pay for how many people are viewing it. The love of the NBA hasn't gone through the roof. So we'll, there's some weird, creepy things going on here, but let's just keep it to my related to my presentation on, on how I worked it into the C presentation that everybody will get an email on if they gave their information and no hobo code. Um, there's no possible way these basketball teams 
could be continuing to pay their players without the income coming in from fans. It's just, it's just, it's so obviously supported with, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, black book payments, off book payments. However, these trillions are being doled out around the world. The entire economics of the C thing makes no sense. Um, there should be, everybody should know five or seven or eight major companies that have gone down at this point, but there's no issue with any major company. In fact, we have the net worth of the top seven or eight billionaires going up over $200 billion since it started. Um, you know, is anybody screaming at me and saying TV contracts, TV revenue? I mean, what? In, you would, in terms of what you would pay players, you would work in. Oh, this is how much we're going to get from fans. A fan comes in, pays fifty dollars for a ticket. Then they buy two hot dogs, two burgers, four beers. That's another eighty dollars, and then parking and all the stuff that goes along with it. You can't take a major element trying to pack a stadium for eighty-five game season or whatever. To take that out. And then just everybody continues to get paid what they got paid. Nobody has to take a pay cut across the board. It's so obvious. That, so in that presentation on C, I have a section on how just the, the economics of it, how the stock market's booming. It's absurd. It's absurd. But in a smaller element of how the economics of it doesn't make any sense is the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball. Why am I? So I, I do that and I feel like I'm forgetting one. NHL, NBA. Major League Baseball, NFL. Thank you. Um, now, if there's a team that had to slash payroll 40%, I, I don't know about it. I guess I haven't done too much research, but I don't think this exists, and I doubt. So all the sports just said, oh, we don't need any money from fans. Everybody can continue to get paid. We're not talking about, I mean, Julius Irving, the doctor, you know, Dr. J, the greatest of all time when basketball was just, you know, still still fun and you know he probably his biggest contract was probably nine or ten million dollars or something like that i mean guys way back in the day you know john havlicek or he's probably paying for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year these it started to happen about 15 years ago it got crazy i guess around 20 years ago or maybe just over that, with the first contract for, um, oh, was it Kevin Durant? No, it wasn't Kevin Durant. He was the, um, the player, the, the seven-footer that played for the Minnesota Timberwolves that ended up playing on the Celtics. He was handed, or they offered him $100 million, maybe 98 99 something like that. Um, if I think of the name, I think of the name, maybe 2001 or two, I don't know, right around that time maybe late 90s, and he rejected it. He said no. And he eventually got like $107 million over, not per year, of course, but over seven years or eight years. It was the first $100 million contract. And I remember talking about it with people at the time going, you know, just to, just think it through. Like somebody, you're, you're playing basketball, the sport that you love, and somebody slides across $100 million, basically most of it guaranteed. All you have to do is sign. Now, anything could happen. You could fall down the steps. If you, who, who's going to say no to that and push it back? See, is your life really going to be, is his life, did it change because he got 107 or 109 million? I mean, what, just the risk of, of pushing it back and walking down the steps, anything could happen. You have to sign it immediately. So, you know, it's just, we, I talked with people about that. Who could possibly push the paper back and say, no, it's not for me, especially at that time. But then, for some reason, and this happened mostly in the last 10 years or so, or 15, the salaries just started to exponentially compound, even for the 50th best player in the, in the NBA, or the, or the 100th, just basically bums. People that would have, if you put them on a team with Julius Irving, or uh, Charles Barkley, or Larry Bird, basically these people are bums. And we're talking... You know, guys that sit the bench now basically come off as the sixth or seventh man are making eight, ten, twelve million dollars a year. So, I guess we'll have to talk another time as to. I'm just saying it's unnatural. It's not anybody you know screaming at this video saying, Matt, the the, the viewership and the love of the NBA, the 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 product must be really going wild, and people 
Um, people are loving the NBA more than they have in the past, and there's more viewers. No, it, I guarantee if you if you look at it, it's you. So it, it, I don't. I wouldn't believe it if whatever statistic they did present to me. So in the back in the day, you had Michael Jordan, people that would just draw you to the television. Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, all these great players. Um, Barkley. Who do you have today that's worth watching? Some, some people like to watch LeBron James. A few players. The NBA is a bunch of bums. The, the sport and the product isn't superior to what it ever was. So if it is driven from the re- revenue they're able to get from advertisers, well, at some point, at some point, it's unnatural. Whoever's overpaying, whoever's supporting these salaries, I'm saying it, it ultimately is propped up. Um, it's basically a, a circus. It's, a, it's almost like from a reality conversation perspective, that these sports um, are so needed to maintain, you know, the Colosseum circus of gladiator that it's it's supported. I'm saying by the system itself, by some off-book transaction. Some Fed just says, "What does the NBA need?" The, well, they need 800 million. They can just print it up on a computer. They just send it out. It goes out through the, the supercomputer. Nope, the money doesn't need to exist anywhere. It can just be sent out into the digital banking system. And for anybody that had those theories about the NBA, those theories are proven now. Proven. No matter how great the conspiracy was on salaries can't be supported, you can't remove fans for an entire season and then just everybody gets paid. I mean, it's uh, it's common sense. It's obvious. I haven't done a second of research on it. I don't need to. I know the NBA product, I know it's mostly a bunch of bums. I know people aren't in love with it up and down this country. There's some people that watch. The salaries have gotten so out of control. You take the fans out, there's no possible way it can be supported. This by itself gives the false nature of what's happening away. And in the presentation I just put together, there's 15 of these that are, you know, equally as strong. So I just want to talk about these salaries, guys. And um, I don't want to get too conspiratorial. I mean, I think there are other reasons, really dark reality-related reasons why these salaries were pushed up. Um, as, who am I talking to now? Just you guys, right? It's not. I'm thinking, you know, this isn't anything that's going to be sent to Aunt Ginny, like the the link that we're going to send people. But it's almost like um, it's almost like it's it's. Uh, it's 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 needed almost to create a sense of hopelessness and depression in the in the general population. I know this isn't coming out right, and I haven't thought it through in a tremendous amount of detail. But you saw Julius Irving making ten million back in the day. You know, you were like, and we're talking eighty four or eighty eighty uh, eighteen eighty two, eighteen eighty four making not making 10 million making 10 million over 4 years or something like that that was his that was his contract length he was probably making 2 or 3 million a year 4 million a year but you were like you know what back in the day it's a lot of money but it's not ridiculous and he deserves it you know you were like you were you were glad for him but they give these bums this amount of money that's just unfathomable and it's almost like it creates a sense of it doesn't create jealousy it creates a sense of like depression or hopelessness that you're in this job you know people in this cubicle working for $52,000 or or $25,000 or whatever it is or you're some hourly employee in retail that makes 15 or $16 an hour and you're trying to get enough hours to get benefits or just like just scrapping by for the most part and you see these these bums these athletes and then they'll threaten to strike you know and it just creates it, it, it's almost like it's it's helping to create this the further divide between haves and have-nots, and I don't know how to describe it. I'm saying the reason for the exponential explosion of salaries, um, which is completely unnatural and is not supported by the economics of the sports, with the exception of maybe the NFL. The NFL takes in a lot of money, but not the NBA. It's a joke. It's a bunch of bums out there. It doesn't play any defense. I'm saying it's almost like it serves a re- one of reality's um, 
uh, serves a function of some kind of reality. And even though it's like an incremental, what's it really doing to push forward reality's goals, dark goals? And it doesn't matter. If they can get one extra percent out of it, I don't think it matters what it costs. I think they they can they can fund it with any again any amount of money can come out of the keyboard. The only issue is inflation. They they can you know the keyboard or the AI supercomputer that manages the world economy and the world stock markets and the world central banks can produce any amount of money. Can produce a hundred trillion a day. It 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 somehow the genius of how it runs its algorithms or its AI is it manages it in such a way so the inflationary effect is low. It has it very low considering how much money has to be being pumped in to all facets of the world economy. And it's we're seeing the inflation. I mean, you go to get um, the biggest thing I've seen recently is you go to get like a roll of bounty paper towels. And just two or three or four years ago, it would be be like seventeen dollars for the but the rolls were big thick had this big thing now these rolls are like tiny little see they'll try to keep the price the same but now it's a tiny little roll i've even noticed in um you get a uh case of uh budweiser or even i don't know if it, if diet coke does it but you can they never jingled i mean this is how they think or this is how they do they do business just to they'll give you less product like you can hear it sloshing around in the can when before it was so packed full and they they know their math. Like if, if if they give you just a quarter of an ounce less, it'll slosh around in the can. But giving every can a quarter of, a, of an ounce less, that adds up to hundreds of millions of dollars around the world. Just taking a little bit off the top, a little bit off the top, a sliver, a sliver, a sliver. So you get a can that you can kind of jingle it around and hear the... So they've, they're not giving you a full 12 ounces, just 11.9 or whatever it might be. And that adds up to hundreds of millions of dollars, and therefore they, the inflationary effect, they don't have to then, they can keep the prices down, but you're getting less product. But overall, the inflation, because of how much money must be being injected, it is amazing how they, how they have kept it so an apple, you know, a real apple you bite into, not a computer, an apple is not, you know, like eight bucks an apple now, how they've, they've kept it under control. And that can only be done, in my opinion, with an artificial intelligence. Uh, the old days, you know, before probably the AI managed the world's economies and the world's banking system and the world's stock markets, to do this sort of injection of money, all of a sudden, you know, you go to buy a television and it would be, you know, television would be 2000 or $4,000. And it, it just, everything would get out of control from an inflationary perspective. But now the, it's, you know, the AI is managing it somehow. And um, you still see its effects. I'm just saying it's still surprising how low it is when it should be completely out of control. And the TV was a, a bad example because um, there's no doubt the cost of assembling a 60-inch Samsung or whatever. It's not, you know, you go to buy it in Target and it's $380 for a 60-inch. If you want a 42-inch, you know, for like $180. There's just no way that's the cost. They would never make any money. It's artificially suppressed. Um, just like the Echo and the Alexa. For the first adopters, it was $80. And then now you can go get Alexa or Echo or your, your house or whatever for like $18.95 or something. If they just, they will, they'll just keep lowering it because they want this technology uh, in front of everybody's eyes so people can further take steps to merge themselves with the digital, to merge themselves with the matrix. And, uh, for example, if nobody started buying iPhones, they would just magically go down to, to you know, you know, to nothing. Or you'd be being paid to, to get an iPhone if nobody... They would, you know, there's no... The, the economics of it doesn't need to make sense. The, the master system will inject and support it financially wherever it needs to. And... Um, sick dark and fascinating at the same time so uh guys um that's that um anybody again if you ha if you still haven't given your information to nohobocode.com you still can and you'll get the link um maybe friday it would be saturday i think at the absolute latest uh, rob's still working some things out and trust me guys it won't if you just immediately start sending it to your cousins or, or there's a solicitation it just i just this is my last best effort 
at putting together a presentation where it just says there's something that's just doesn't smell right with how this C is being presented to the world. There are other agendas. It won't embarrass you if you if you decide to send it before listening to it. It's a very professional presentation. I have a few jokes here and there. The conspiracy is kept to a minimum. And um, you know, I hope you do agree to pass it around to as many people as you can. I mean, I used to, how many times have you heard me say we're running out of time or we're out of, we're out of time. I mean, if the pendulum doesn't swing a little bit back uh, in our direction going into the spring, I, I don't want to say anything negative, but you you can kind of sense what I would want to say. Somebody sent me something today, I guess David, um, where I don't know if it was Doctor F or was recommending a double wear two masks. I you know, like it, if the pendulum doesn't start swinging back a little bit. Um, and some people would say reality itself has become such an in- ridiculous bozo show. It's it's designed itself, so it just becomes so absurd that you will see more people around you just going, "This is this is ridiculous. I can't do this anymore." I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, never ever expected to to be where we are. None of us did. And um, still holding out good expectations and good hopes that, uh, you know, they're going to have to back off the redlining. And um, especially as everybody, you know, my father got the action, Jackson. And as more people do this, I mean, you know, it, it really, they'll have to return a degree of normalcy, you, you would think, right? Maybe not after what we've seen, but you would think they'd have to. Um, it's just going to be what's going to happen to the leper colony, us. What are they going to do to the typhoid Marys, us? Um, that will be what will play out next. But if you're somebody like my father and you've been action Jacksonated, are you going to be, if you're, you're going to stand in line in Wawa in two months, or as the weather starts to break and get good with your your mask on, or as, as Dr. F suggests, your double mask on, you're going to be standing in, you know, you'd go in, and you you would think this is what a normal person would do, but somebody screaming at this presentation probably should be screaming at me and say, Matt, why are you expecting people to act normally? Let me just let me just pretend. You're right. Whoever was screaming at me, you're right. Let me just pretend and say, you'd be in line without a, without a mask, and someone's like, you need to put your mask on. I got Jackson. You know, why would I need to do that? So I just got whatever. You think. So if you scream that back at whoever saying, get out of my store because you don't have the, the mask on, um, what are they going to say back when she said, well, I got it. I'm, no, I, I got it. I'm, I got the double round, whatever. So it, once that starts happening, you would think this the, this mandatory cover, face covering everywhere would have to go away. You'd think, I, I don't know, nothing would surprise me anymore, right? So who knows? We'll just have to see how it plays out. We, the pendulum has to come back a little bit going into the spring. If not, we are screwed. Thanks, guys.